What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna be installing a secondary battery with an isolator on my Honda Civic. So basically why I'm doing this is cause like, I got uh, two uh, Twister Audio Vortex 12 inch subwoofers, 1000 watts each, 2000 watts RMS in total. And also got a massive uh, Hippo four channel amplifier, which is 200 watts per channel for four ohms. So I got the big three upgrade already but my voltage just isn't happy. Like when I'm playing full tilt, most of the time my, uh, it's going down to 11, 10, sometimes even nine, and it's making my four channel cool off. So I'm gonna show y'all what I'm running right now, like as far as the subwoofers. So those are the uh, 1000 watts each subwoofers. And since my electrical is already like struggling, I need to go ahead and do an upgrade I haven't got the main battery yet as far as like a, a new excess power uh, AGM just cause like that's expensive itself. Like that's $300. And the same thing with high output alternator. But with the secondary battery, got me a small, it's a uh, crank it up. It's people say it's like a, um, just a rebrand of kinetic battery. So I'm gonna trust it. It's a lot cheaper than doing the main battery and the um, high, up, up, high output alternator. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because eventually I wanna put a 3K on that. Right now, I only got 1500, 1500 watts going to that, uh, uh, them subwoofers. So I already know I'm gonna need more power and at least I'll have more storage. I know I gotta get that high output alternator to actually get true power, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it on my Civic and I'll show y'all everything I did. So this right here is the battery I'm using. Like I said, crank it up, which people say that it's like basically just a rebranded kinetic. So. I'm gonna take that word for it. It's gonna help, even if it's cheap, it's gonna help. And got the Stinger uh, battery isolator. So basically, it just isolates the battery. So if one goes dead, the other one doesn't start draining and, and go dead as well. Like say, if you're playing with your music off. And it's just a safety mechanism. It's good to have. It's only like, it's pretty cheap. And uh, zero gauge wiring, of course. Terminals and just connectors and stuff. And then a fuse, and I got a, two is this, a 200? Yeah, 200 amp fuse. Since I got a stock alternator, that's big enough. So that's the material you need. Obviously you need like, like tool, like drills and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna show you all that. So let's go ahead and get, get started. First, I'm gonna maybe make a little diagram on a piece of paper and show y'all what, what I'm about to do before I do it. So y'all can just get a visual on what I'm about to do. All right, guys, so I tried to make a little diagram for y'all and I'm about to basically explain it to y'all. So this is like you looking at the car from the top down. So like this is the front of the hood, like the hood, this is the main battery. And if you already got some amps, you already gonna have a, a, a zero gauge uh, power wire going to your amps. So what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna be plugged up to your amps. You're gonna unplug it to, from your amp and plug it into one, of, one side of the isolator. This right here is like the isolator. It's gonna have, I'll just show y'all on this. It's gonna have two big uh, terminals, like one going from the uh, the power wire from the main battery. And then this one is gonna go to your secondary battery, is which is, is which I showed y'all right here. So that, that one right there is gonna go to your positive of the secondary battery. And then these other two small ones, this one is, uh, a positive, uh, what's it called? Well, actually, no, I, it's this one. I just color coded them. So this one is going to be the positive. You, oh, mind you, all this can be interchanged. Like you can put a positive right here and a negative right here, or you can switch it. Really doesn't matter. But like I said, uh, one one you're going to have a ground, and one you're going to have a, a ignition power. So like whenever the car is off, the switch turns off, or like that wire turns off. So. With that, uh, with this one, with the positive, you can connect. I've heard that you can just connect that up straight up to the remote end of like the amplifier, like that little small blue wire that's in between the power and the ground. You just put it there. So that's what I show right there, the remote. And then you have the positives, and then you're gonna get another uh, lead uh, from the second battery for the positive and go straight to the amp. But you gotta have a fuse, kind of like similar to like you have how you have to have a fuse. With the main battery, same thing. You gotta have a fuse in between secondary battery and amp. And for the grounds, 
you gonna make you a new ground. Don't use the same ground that you use for like your uh, amplifiers. So you gonna make you a new ground and you can connect a ground from the, uh, the battery to the chassis and then also a ground for the isolator and you can put it on the same ground. So that's pretty much all I'm doing. So now let's go ahead and actually start working on it. I just thought that might be a little helpful. So really first I gotta figure out where I wanna put the main battery. I'm probably thinking it's behind the subs because there's really not enough room to, for me to put, put it next to the subs because I have a kind of a small trunk. So I'm gonna show y'all what I'm working with and let's go ahead and get started y'all. And make sure to, before y'all start doing any kind of disconnecting or anything like that, go ahead and unplug your battery because since you're working with electrical, you don't want to let you keep yourself, you don't want to burn your car down, all that. It's just, it's just safe just to disconnect your battery. So I'm going to do that first. All right, guys. So don't talk about my wiring. I had different amps and I had cut the cords and the cords weren't long enough for this longer amp. So it's just cords everywhere. But... This is where I'm thinking I'm going to put the battery because if I put it right there, if I put it in the middle, it's going to be hitting this when I close the trunk. And if I put it over here, actually, I could put it right there. I'm still trying. I'm still debating where's the best spot. But if I put it right there, it won't move much at all, especially if I put like a little bracket. But wherever I put it, I'm going to put the uh, isolator. I'm just going to drill into the back of the box and put it like close to it so really just trying to figure out where i want to put it and i'll come back to y'all when i decide but um so this is the power i'm going to be disconnecting because since i have a distribution block it should be a lot easier for me to just to like unscrew this and then put the new one in so yeah just got to figure out where i want to put everything all right so i went ahead and made my decision going to put the battery right here and isolate it right there so before I start plugging stuff in, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to make me a new ground. So what I think I gotta do is uh, take this lower part of the seat out. And basically all you gotta do to do that, let me move this out the way real quick. All you have to do to do that is come down here. I believe it'll be a 10 millimeter bolt. And there's just one bolt. And then this is just held, held on by a clip. And it should just be able to come up like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that bolt and then take this off and go ahead and start finding my ground. All right, guys, I did a little bit of tidying up while I was here, might as well. So y'all don't talk about my wiring. I know it's still not perfect, but um, it's better than it was. So what I just did is this was the power uh, wire from the, um, from the main battery. Went ahead and disconnected that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put the ring terminal in on. Then I'm gonna go to the, uh, making that new ground. But one thing you got to have if you are uh, making um, like zero gauge terminals, you cannot crimp with like a regular like crimper or you're like a like a um, some pliers or something. You need a hydraulic crimper. And I learned that fast. You can get the, I got this one off of Harbor Freight for like $60. It's expensive, but it's worth it because you ain't going to be to crimp that yourself. I thought I was going to be able to bare hand it, but like just bare strength it. You can't do it. You got to get one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go to the ground and then worry about connecting all that together. All right, guys. So I'm going ahead and cutting the wire. Um, for whatever reason, that wire cutter that I got said it worked for zero gauge, but it did not. So I went ahead and uh, ordered one off of Amazon. Hopefully it comes tonight. I got one of those ones that come in from 5 to 10 p.m., whatever, because I got to go to work tomorrow. But um, <laughs> anyways, I already went ahead and ran, uh, cut the cord that I need. So... This is the old, the from the battery, main battery that are going like there, like I said. Then I got cut this one. This goes from here to the positive end. And then, let's see, where is... Uh, I got so many cords, I don't know which one is which. And then this one goes, again, from the positive to here. And then the last one I got it like it's in my ground but like obviously it's red i didn't have more gauge i mean like black zero gauge so i'm using the same wire i just got to make sure i don't get confused and then this one is going from negative then pull the seat up real quick and i'm gonna uh make a new ground right here right next to these other ones so 
gonna have try to at least do everything besides the crimping because i can't right now obviously so won't be able to finish until i get that but gonna go ahead and make this ground so it'll be ready so whenever i do get the crimping tool all the stuff will be crimped and all, all i have to do is just plug everything in all right guys so also went ahead and uh got these wired so this is the negative that's going down and it's going to connect to that that uh red um negative that i made earlier or that i'm about to make i'm gonna make it right next to there just make sure when you uh about to make a ground make sure you uh like clear out clean off the paint with like like a wire wheel whatever make sure you're getting bare metal and then for the positive which is the remote or the ignition same thing pretty much i got that going down to this amplifier right here and it's connecting to the other two remote wires i have so this is only going to turn on it's only going to isolate when this isn't get when this isn't getting power i might have said that opposite but y'all know what i mean so pretty much everything is done i just got to make the ground and wait for them crimpers to come in crimpers to come in so i can crimp the uh zero gauge wires and that's pretty much it so hopefully i'm gonna test it hopefully everything uh is working make sure it's sounding like the or not sounding but like make sure the voltage is better it should be because you know my my little honda civic it w was struggling for its dear life w with this and this mainly this is only 1500 watts and like i said i was get, i'm getting a 3k soon so i gotta have some more uh, energy stored up so hopefully next alternator and um main battery hopefully excess power if i got the money for it but um just hope i'll come back with y'all i'll come back <laughs> And also forgot to mention, y'all got to make sure that y'all use the ground just to be safe. Like, you always do it with the main battery. Might, why not do it with the secondary battery? It's always recommended. So, that this one is going to be from the positive end of the uh, secondary battery straight into the amps. In my case, the distribution block. So, yeah. All right, guys. So, finally got my wires crimped. That was a pain in the butt, to say the least. So I bought this thinking it wasn't gonna work, but turns out I really just had, my terminals were a little too big for this, like it wouldn't fit in this hole, but all that it, all I had to do was squeeze it down with some pliers a little bit and it'll fit in the hole. I at first got a different set of uh, crimpers, which I got off of Amazon. These didn't work cause what I, the, the metal for the terminals was a little too thick for this. So it was almost impossible to squeeze it. So this is better for like thinner, uh, uh, like uh, terminals and stuff, but got all that situated. So now all I gotta do is connect all the wires and put a bracket so this isn't r running around every time I drive. And so yeah, I'm gonna get back to y'all once I hook up everything up and then I'm gonna show y'all what I did. So let's get into it. Although it looks very ugly, I finished y'all. So main wire to this side of the isolator and then the other side to the positive and then you got another positive going with a fuse all the way to the amps which in my case i have a distributor block and then you just got to have a ground right there and also have a ground from that isolator and i got both of them going to this right here and last cord is the uh remote wire that i got connected to this amp right here into the uh remote right there so it looks done i got these brackets to uh hold them in and then i just screwed these on the back of the box so that's really about it and i might try to tidy up these wires later but at this point i'm done y'all so i'll come back and let y'all know how it sounds it's like if i see in better voltage or whatnot but yeah, I'm finished, y'all.